fat people, if you are overweight and or obese, 100%, it is a un healthy condition. It's not supposed to happen to you. You're not supposed to be fat to the point where you're carrying around double or triple or quadruple the amount of weight that you're supposed to. I don't know why this is a far-fetched idea to think that people that are fat are going to have health problems. It's not. People that are fat are going to have health problems. I guess the question is, why is being in shape or being skinny silent flex? I because it's a reflection of responsibility. It's a reflection of taking care of yourself. It's a reflection. It's showing you all these great, amazing traits that somebody is obviously gonna find attractive. This person says, I don't wanna be fat because I have been before and it was uncomfortable. I am also so much healthier now, so why would I ruin that? In that last video when I asked, why do you not want to be fat? It was to get you to think about the reasons behind not wanting to be fat. Yeah, it seems like he had a pretty good explanation. Uh, am I wrong in saying that? I mean, that seems like I don't wanna be fat because I have been fat I've been fat before and it was uncomfortable. I am also much healthier now. So why would I ruin that? Yeah, period. Slay. That's exactly the truth, man. This is like the most clean response you could possibly give. Where is the questioning in this question in, in this entire thing? This is a pretty good, this is a concise statement. This is exactly true. You have all these problems while being fat, and this person is just telling you straight up they don't want to have to deal with those things. Okay. All right. I'm willing to listen. To be fat, it was to get you to think about the reasons behind not wanting to be fat. I'm not suggesting that everybody try to become fat because fat is better somehow. It's not better. There's like almost nothing good about being fat unless you go to like the most extreme scenarios. Like you're stuck in like a mountain somewhere and you have to suck off Eskimos to eat, to, to, to eat fish or something like that. In those scenarios, it might be beneficial to carry a few extra pounds. Or if you're like role playing or maybe you're LARPing as Santa Claus and like some kind of role, let's say your wife is like really into it, right? Maybe she wants to do some like Nightmare Before Christmas type shit and she wants you to dress up like Santa Claus. It might be all right to have a little bit of extra weight on you to fit that role a little bit correctly. But here's the thing, if you are LARPing as Santa Claus, how often are you doing that? Like how often are you gonna be dressing up as Santa Claus to please your wife, your 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 woman? Not Probably not that much. So even though this is a very niche scenario, if you have to sacrifice, then you have to sacrifice. But in most scenarios, you're not having to dress up as Santa Claus. But one of the main things about fat phobia is that we assume fat people are unhealthy because of their fat. What do you mean assume? What, what, where, where are we getting the assume from on that one? What, what do you what do you mean assume? That's true. That, that that that's that's a factual statement right there. It's not it's not an assumption that fat people that are fat don't have health problems. They got health problems. We know that. That's a factual statement, dude. Have you ever met a fat person that wasn't out of breath? That wasn't suffering with joint pains and back problems and all this other stuff? I know dudes that are big men, big men, big, you know, big giant men, big strong guys, right? And even these dudes that are 250 are struggling with that shit. I talk to these dudes a lot. And them going up a simple flight of stairs, they're <gasps> at the end of that flight because they're big guys. For me, I could walk up that flight of stairs, no problem. But if you stacked on an extra 100 pounds on me, dude, that shit is most definitely gonna kill me at the end of that like last step. I've done it before. When I have to walk up, two, three, four flights of stairs, and I'm carrying cases of water in my hand, that shit is agonizing. I'm out of breath at the end of that. Now, can you imagine doing that every day, day in, day out, stack on an extra 100, 200, 300 pounds on your shit, and go to work, go to work, any job. I don't care what job you're doing. Obviously, it's gonna be much worse if you're on top of a fucking roof. That roof, the structural integrity of that roof is not, is most definitely gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna be working a little bit de degenerately. But if you're if you're working even in an office job, just simply like getting up out of your seat and then like going over to get some coffee or something or making some faxes or whatever you do in the office. I don't know the fuck you're doing in the office. That shit's already good. That's going to be difficult for you too. What are you going to like walk around like this? You're going to like inch your, your chair around to get where you need to go? It's just like it's nothing about it that's practical when it comes to being fat. Why aren't you playing? But even if every single person person on this planet ate the same foods did the same exercise we all lived the exact same lives there would still be fat people and non-fat people yeah but why does that matter why you even bring that up uh obviously human beings are different like danny devito is like what four foot nine or something like that and i'm not four foot nine so if we ate the same thing he would he might gain more weight because i have more body to fill out sure but that's not really a claim at all what even is this claim like what, what is your point for this claim are you trying to make it seem like if everybody ate the same thing, there'd still be differences in people's bodies. I know. What the fuck? Obvious fucking lead. That's like somebody saying, like, if we all filled up our cars the same way, we would not get the same distances. 
I know because we have different cars for different tasks, right? It's almost kind of weird that you would make that assumption. Like, are you working to the assumption that everybody's the same or are you trying to make it seem like everybody's different? Therefore, we should never lose weight because it doesn't matter ultimately because everybody is different. That's dumb. That's fucking dumb. If anything, that should be a case for you to lose more weight since like, given the fact of like if somebody is 250 and they're a big ass ginormous six foot eight dude, he can eat that. He's good. He has a lot of weight to fill up. But if you're a girl and you're like five foot two and you think you can eat the same 3,000, 4,000 calories that this guy can eat, shut up. You can't. That's not going to happen. I mean, you can, but you're going to be big. So that's not a case to not lose weight. That's just a dumbass. That's That doesn't even make sense. Why are you even making that? claim what does that have to do with anything we all lived the exact same lives there would still be fat people and non-fat people yeah and there are some healthy habits that you can adopt that anytime i hear these people go you shouldn't lose weight instead you should pursue you should pursue healthy habits as if weight loss is not a healthy habit to pursue at all like what do you, so you're telling me instead of like doing the thing that i would do in order to alleviate most of my problems which is weight loss if you weigh 350 and you need to lose say for instance 200 pounds which will put you at 150 and you're telling me that i shouldn't lose that 200 pounds which would make my life significantly better in almost every way you're telling me i shouldn't do that instead i should go i should do things like i don't know instead of like eating that peanut butter spread the gif I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that organic all the way, the shit that's been milked from like cow udders or something like that, wherever you make peanut butter from. You're telling me I got to do that, like the all organic peanut butter or like, what is another healthy habit? Uh, a fucking joyful movement. I hear that one quite a bit. Joyful movement. It's like sex, I guess. I don't fucking, what is joyful movement? Getting sucked off? What is joyful movement? Can I, can we just be honest for a second? Because I know for me, joyful movement is walking. For you, well, probably not that, but you know what I'm saying? Like what you just... What you're basically saying is like, don't pursue the thing that's going to get you 99% of the way there. Pursue the thing that's going to get you 1% of the way there. What the fuck are you doing? You're not, you're not accomplishing shit. Will probably make you lose weight. I got to go back. Context. And there are some healthy habits that you can adopt that will probably make you lose weight. So let's say, for example, that I don't want to drink soda because we know soda is not good for you. If I am previously, how you how can you acknowledge that soda is not good for you, but you can't acknowledge that weight is also not good for you? What is the cognitive dissonance here, dude? I can't believe these people are they're so forthcoming about certain things, but then on the off hand, they'll say something that's like in the same vein that's completely opposite of that. You know what I'm talking about? That's like some guy going like, dude, psh, fuck gay dudes. Gay dudes are gay. I psh, I would never be a homosexual. Homosexuals are gay. I don't fuck with that shit. I sucked the dude off two days ago. I can't even lie to you, dude. It was crazy, but it wasn't my fault. It was a glory hole. I walked into the bathroom stall and I sat down. I had to drop this mega shit and I saw a hole. And when I saw the hole, I was like, what is that? And uh, there was no penis or anything like that. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to lick the rim. So I put my tongue on the rim of the glory hole and I, uh, I licked the rim of the glory hole. And while I was doing that, I almost couldn't believe it. A big bbc slide its way through to the the glory hole and when it came through my mouth was open so i couldn't really control it and then it, it just hit the back of my my chin it hit the back of my neck and it kind of it kind of came out like it was like a like you know what i'm talking about like one of those old cartoons it was just like coming out the back of my neck it was so big and i also it was crazy too to think about this when i sat down to the toilet to drop ass there was a dude already sitting on the toilet and he was erect it wasn't even a bathroom, I don't think. I don't even know where I was. Anyway. Example that I don't want to drink soda because we know soda is not good for you. If I am previously a soda drinker and I give up drinking soda, there is a good chance that I will lose weight from it. Yeah, that. because you're not drinking those extra calories anymore. If you, if you, the amount of people I know that would drink three, four, five, six sodas a day, and I knew some people that didn't even drink water in a day. All they would drink all day was soda and coffee and not even real coffee like you're you're just going to starbucks and get one of those 800 calorie drinks that are primarily just sugar and milk so i i see these people constantly and when you do that the calories alone from the soda are going to be literally sometimes a thousand calories and think about it you're drinking 150 calories a can and you drink maybe a few of those a day five six seven a day easily 800 to a thousand calories that you're just sucking down your mouth that you're getting nothing from it by the way it's just useless calories that you're not getting anything from so if you cut that out alone, yeah, you're going to lose weight 100% probably. But even if I did not lose any weight from cutting soda out. Which is highly unlikely. The cutting out of the soda 
is the healthy habit. Sure. In all the videos that I've made about this in the past couple days, I was very clear to say intentional weight loss because that's what I mean when the intention is weight loss and not health. Okay. But because of fat phobia, we conflate them to be one and the same thing, that being fat is bad health. It is. Being thin is good health. Most of the time it is. Like if you're fat, like again, there's very niche scenarios, I have to specify this, very niche scenarios that when you're fat, it might be beneficial for you. Like if you want to do that Santa Claus role play or something like that. Might be cool there, but overall, probably still not even that good, if I'm going to be honest. There's plenty of other things that you could role play as. A police officer? Well, hold up now. Maybe not a police officer because that's a little bit touch and go. Some people would like to do the police officer. Or you could always do a role play as like a schoolgirl type of thing. I personally don't really like the schoolgirl stuff because I don't like putting on the dress. But there's a, there's a ton of other stuff that you can do for role plays that doesn't consist of dressing up as Santa Claus. There's also... Um, on the other end, being thinner is almost nothing but benefits. Like you don't have to walk around with double or triple the amount of weight on your body on a consistent basis. It just seems like it's more better. It's just, it's just all the goodness of being thin and none of the badness of being fat. And statistically, if you're going based on the mortality rate, people who Shut are the fuck up. Anytime I hear these people go off like, Oh, did you know? Well, one of the ones I hated the most, right? I, I, I heard this one quite a bit. They don't talk about this anymore because I think they thought like they probably thought about it or maybe they probably didn't. Let's be honest. I maybe just forgot. But one I heard a lot was fat people have a higher likelihood of surviving heart attacks. Therefore, it's probably better to be fat. And then I, I remember I heard that and I was like, Wow, that's crazy. But then I looked into it, right? And then I realized that fat people are surviving heart attacks at a higher rate compared to normal people because the people that are usually having heart attacks are like in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? Usually. And people that are fat having heart attacks are <laughs> in their 20s. And obviously, when you're in your 20s, your durability is significant compared to when you were in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So naturally, of fucking course, when you're in your 20s, the rebound is going to be much significant compared to somebody like dying because that's like a, a crazy event that's happening when you're in your 60s, right? Or 70s, 80s. And also, you're having heart attacks at a higher rate at a younger age compared to like a 70-year-old who's realistically at the very end of their lifespan. You know, that's like the last few years of their life, last decade, two decades of their life. Well, you still got like five, six, seven of those. Well, maybe not for you if you're big as fuck. But whenever I hear these people go, according to statistics... Fat people actually live longer than, than, than these people because thin people don't actually have any types of problems. And fat people are great and beautiful. I always hear that and I always go, where are you pulling that from? Why? How come I've never heard of this information ever? Ever, ever, ever. Is it because you're like purposely searching for some study somewhere that somebody did on Reddit and then you, you decided that this was like sufficient evidence to prove that fat people are delicioso? We conflate them to be one and the same thing, that being fat is bad health being thin is good health and statistically if you're going based on the mortality rate people who are slightly overweight are actually the healthiest group most of our research about fat and its effects on the body are not done well either it's too easy to say that like are you telling me there's like so they're not done well so therefore we should just never look at any of the evidence we have of like all the results and stuff like that because it's not done well apparently what is what by what metric are you judging the not done well what, what are you judging that off of? How do you even get to the not done well part? All of these studies are also based on the yeah, BMI. See, that's the problem, dude. I get it. You don't like the BMI because the guy that created it had like a very big schlong or something like that. And he hated black guys or something like that. Like, I get it. But I always go back to the same reason why these people, like, if you don't want to use the BMI, you don't have to. It's very easy to just look at the scale and go, am I 250? I'm fat. That's a crazy thing. Like, when I look down at the scale, you have to like, arch over you know what i'm talking about you have to like push in <gasps> look in like you know suck in do a vacuum to look over and see your scale and then go oh my god right because you're so fat then you got to lose some fucking weight if you can't even physically look at the number on the scale because your gut is so massive that the number on the scale is being clouded by the by the by the gut the surface of your belly then you probably should need to, you probably need to lose weight if you don't want to look at the bmi because you think it's racist that's fine i mean it's kind of dumb because like that's not how we judge anything in our life ever because some guy sometime somewhere made something that he was racist and guess what if you go through history everybody was racist like everybody man and it was like a very common thing and even by like today's metrics which is like very very weird a lot of people could just consider you to be racist because i don't know dude 
You, I, had a, I had somebody tell me, bro, that I was racist because I dated black girls, which is crazy to me. Like, I had this guy literally tell me, he's like, why don't you date, yeah, dog, why don't you date white women? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's like, I've been dating this girl, so it's like, I'm not going to break up with her to date a white girl. She seems pretty sufficient for me. He's like, I don't know, dog. There's something racist about you dating a sister. And I was like, I don't know. You literally tell me you date like ice queens and snow bunnies and shit like that. If you're gonna come at me for dating, what's the what's the what's like uh if I'm a snow bunny and he's dating like ice queens and snow bunnies, what's the other name that I can use for me dating uh like black queens or whatever they want to call those? I don't know what they call those nowadays. Whatever. The point I'm making is is dumb. Is dumb. And like the way that they describe this shit, it doesn't make any sense. Like if you found out tomorrow today that the car you're driving was designed and developed and made by a guy that ate children, would you stop driving that car? No, you wouldn't. You would not do that because guess what? You don't care. He could be a vampire. He could be a werewolf, dude. That's part of his culture. What are you doing? Stop it. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. Like it's, nobody's ever gonna, nobody's ever looking at it like that. Like I'm not using the BMI, even though it's an important metric to be judged by. And it's like not accurate, but it's like pretty accurate enough to get a baseline of where you're at. I'm not gonna use it because the guy that made it was like racist or something like that. Okay, okay. Body are not done well either. All of these studies are also based on the BMI, which is also not accurate and has racist origins. I'm I, would, I really want to have a conversation with these people, dude, because like most of the stuff that we're using now can be traced back to some guy that made it and he was racist, right? Like what if you found out like the lights in your house was made by like some guy that was like, what if he, what if he just like started strangling black people? Like he was the black guy strangler and he was like, I hate black guys. Black guys are the worst. I hate them. And like, would you just like, I can't believe this. I'm going to live in the woods like an Ewok for the rest of my life. What if you found out the guy that created, you know, technically, actually, we're going to be honest here for a second. If you were somebody that believed in like God and then you, you, de you define that as like a, oh, God created racist. So that wouldn't that mean that God's racist? So that means that you're you're racist now too because you believe in God and you're you're God technically or something like I don't know man. It's like I don't yeah, why do I have to look down like that? Like why do I have to these people's logic, man. Anyway, I'm not really sure says. what else I'm supposed to say other than the majority of my platform being dedicated to me talking about the connective tissue disorder, the chronic illness that I have, for me to get you to understand that I literally never said that I was healthy. If there's something else that I can say to help that make more sense to you. If you, okay, I would want to see those doctors say you're healthy with your weight. The way Jordan likes to look at it is there, I have a chronic condition, which she does. She has lipedema, right? Serious, very serious form of lipedema. And I definitely feel for her, I do. Uh, that's a terrible condition that affects a lot of people and it's not something you can really do there's no cure for it apparently that is terrible but and this is a giant but a big but ginormous but okay why wouldn't you lose weight uh i understand that you may not be able to lose that excess tissue in your legs there are other parts of your body that can that has all that lipedema but are you working under the assumption that a hundred percent of your body of the tissue that you're seeing is that all lipedema? Probably not. Probably not. And you, do you think that weight loss would just never be ever an option on the table that would maybe alleviate some of these problems? No, because it just kind of seems like to me that if you did have this debilitating condition, which I do agree with you, and if you're telling me that therefore you have this debilitating condition, which makes you objectively unhealthy, therefore you should never ever do anything to make yourself healthier because you'll always be chronically unhealthy, that seems dumb. That doesn't make any sense. That's like somebody going, I'm going to die one day, so therefore I'm not going to do anything. That doesn't make any sense at all. Nobody thinks like that. And the fact that you could just say stuff like that is 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 kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Do you... I'll say it. I'm not really sure what else I have to say. Other than that, I literally have a connective tissue disorder. Okay. It's like a chronic illness, it's autoimmune condition, and therefore, like, I am not healthy. <laughs> so there's, like, nothing you could do to make yourself healthier? Like, losing weight is never an option? Like, going and...
you know, calorie deficiting a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. I don't know how much Jordan weighs, but Jordan's a big person. So I'm, I'm thinking that she could probably spare some calories. I'm not a doctor, obviously, but most of the time when these people say stuff like that, like, oh, are you my doctor? You can't tell me what I can and cannot do. That'd be like me so I'm going up to somebody like, how could you, how could you tell that this dog is a dog? How do you know this is a dog? If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So if you are somebody with lipedema or whatever, lymphedema, I get it. I understand. It's a condition. It's a chronic condition. It's something you can't change. It's something that's going to affect your life for the remainder of your life. And that sucks a lot of big, giant fucking camel dicks. I get it. But like never looking at weight loss as an issue. I mean, I'm just going to say it. it's not a, it's not it's not a good thing that you're considering this not to be a, a solution to a lot of your problems. Given the fact that you have a chronic illness, that's doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what to say. Like my health has dropped. I also dropped. think that it's like because Jordan is so young, it's like it's super easy when you're a younger person. I know when I was a younger person, I just kind of thought that I was immortal for a long period of time. I just kind of thought there was nothing I could do. I remember literally going through, I don't know what year it was, but I was in my earlier twenties. And I didn't have health insurance for a good amount of time. And that was because I was poor and lazy and I didn't have it. And then because I didn't have it, I just kind of thought I was good. I was really good. But then I had something that happened to me and I was like, holy shit, if I get like going to the doctors, which is obviously something's going to happen because I'm not a mortal. I'm a human being just like you and me. We have problems. Things happen. Things kind of just happen out of nowhere sometimes. I thought that I was going to be good when I wasn't good. And then it like occurred to me, holy shit, I'm not in that predicament. I'm not in that situation of an immortal, so I have to get health insurance just in case. So I don't have to like put this burden of financial destitute on myself and maybe perhaps family members or people around me. I don't want that to happen. So it is like super, super important. Oftentimes when I see these people talking about these issues, it's like you're not just – you're not just like putting this problem on yourself, okay? Like it's very selfish to think that this is a problem that's only going to be affecting yourself in terms of weight and even health in general. Like even though you have chronic illnesses and very, very bad things that are happening to you that you have no control over, overall, you should try to make yourself as healthy as possible or at least do what you can within the means at which you have in order to make yourself as healthy as you possibly can within the means you have, of course. So that way you don't have to have other people take care of you or at least limit that to as much as you can because if you have kids, family members, or other things like that, yeah, dude, it is a very selfish thing to have your life just be incredibly unhealthy when you can do something about that and then everybody else has to worry about that. It's not cool. It's not. It's, it's quite depressing. And, you know, I'm with Jordan. Uh, I, you know, it's crazy to me that Jordan, I think Jordan's like 23, 24, something like that, dude. She's a young person. Even I thought Jordan was like 31 when I, when I first saw her, 31, 30. I thought she was 34 as of this year, but she's not 34. She's like 21, 22, 23, something like that. She's around that age. And, um, it is, she just doesn't have life experience, I'm guessing, or maybe she just hasn't been through the trials and tribulations, which is, I'm not saying that I've been through a lot of shit, but I'm saying that usually when you get through life, you do go through shit. Like uh, everybody's going to go through something. Everybody's going to lose a family member. Everybody's going to lose something. It's going to hit you very, very hard. And I hope that Jordan, when that does happen, because ultimately I don't want it to happen, obviously, but it is something that's going to happen. Something's going to happen to you. Um, hopefully Jordan has the ability to recognize the problems and bounce from that and do it in a way that's significant and health, health oriented. Drastically improved with, I don't know what to say. Like my health has drastically improved with treatment. And I think that maybe the piece that you want me to say is that you want me to say that I am unhealthy in the ways that you assume fat people to be fat people if you're fat okay now granted here is a very unique scenario of jordan who has a condition of lymphedema right okay but she's also obese right she's also obese like you can't look at the way jordan is and also not think that she's obese fat people if you are overweight and or obese 100 it is a un healthy condition it's not supposed to happen to you you're not supposed to be fat to the point where you're carrying around double or triple or quadruple the amount of weight that you're supposed to i don't know why this is a far-fetched idea to think that people that are fat are gonna have health problems it's not people that are fat are gonna have health problems especially if you're obese maybe i don't know maybe i don't know is a crazy ass statement jordan 
Jordan, okay? I get it, dude. You don't want to say yes or no because that will confirm your biases. This this person is correct and that it will, like, completely implode all your beliefs and you'll start to, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, this, obviously, you can't say yes or no because if you did, it would fuck you both ways, right? If you said yes, then everything that you believe in is fundamentally wrong and that every, you know, all, it just collapses in on you. And if you say no, that's also a ridiculous-ass statement because you're obese and obviously that's a fucking issue. So, you, so I don't know. Okay. It's like, it's like a politician answering a question, right? But the problem here is that it only affects you, right? Because like, if you're failing to acknowledge it on both ends, you get nothing done. You get absolutely nothing done. And cre cre it's true that like, it doesn't affect me. I mean, kind of it does because I'm reacting to your shit, but it's only going to benefit you to acknowledge the truth. Only, only going to benefit you. It might benefit me a little bit because the dopamine hit of me finding out that you're losing weight and becoming healthier and becoming stronger and all that other stuff. That's great. That would also help me. But overall, fuck me. It doesn't matter. It's for you. It's like all this shit is about you right now, Jordan. It's the important thing to understand that shit can get fucked up for you and to mitigate those as much as possible. Like, I am honest to- You can't say you're honest while you just said, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm- uh, I don't know if I can lose weight. Is that you- I don't know if it's bad for me. Assume fat people to be? I Maybe? I don't know. Like, I am honest to a fault about my health specifically. You're obviously not. You're not acknowledging, like, key aspects of your life because you know that if you did, it would literally negatively affect you in the- in the- in the- the bubble that you have put yourself in on my social media platforms with purpose because I want people to learn about this disorder so that they can get the care that they need and what you're doing is like if you had a what is that thing called like a charcuterie board or whatever like you know how they have like different assortments of fruits and vegetables and things like that what you're doing is like you have this chart okay you have this like tray of problems, right? Everybody does. And some people have more problems than other problems. Like for instance, like maybe you have the carrots, which is like your lipedema, and then you got the celery, which is obesity. And maybe you got like a drug addiction. I'm not saying she does, but I'm saying in general, like let's, let's just say hypothetically here, celery, carrots, and what did I say? Celery, carrots, and fucking orange peels. Okay. Celery, carrots, and orange peels. What you're doing is instead of looking at the celery and carrots, you're only looking at the celery and you're just like wiping it. You're like, but you're not actually wiping it because I stay there. You're just kind of like not looking at the rest of it. You're just focusing on this one thing. And that's fine. You can look at that one thing and you can focus really hard on that one thing, but it's like really cool and really like helpful to look at the other things as well. Whatever I said, like orange peels and the celery or whatever the fuck it was. You can look at those things too and at least acknowledge them as things that are detrimental, things that are hurting you. You don't have to do anything. It's your life. It's completely fine. I believe in autonomous human beings. You can do whatever the fuck you want, but at least can you acknowledge that these things are there at the bare minimum. Have access to the tools and treatment that they need to improve their health. I know for a fact that my content has given people the tools to get diagnosed and to begin treatment. And so if your primary concern is people being healthy, then you should be thanking me honestly yeah, sure i mean i think to a certain degree jordan is correct in the in the statement of i've helped people get diagnosed therefore you should look at me as like a helpful human being in the spectrum of sure i mean you can say that like it i'm sure but it'd be like the equi it's not the equivalent but that'd be like somebody saying like oh I'm a doctor who was misdiagnosing people like I was purposefully misdiagnosing people but the, the because I was misdiagnosing people and those people like suffered immensely those people then went to other doctors who were better than me that were actually helpful and then they got the proper diagnosis there so therefore you should look at me as a per person that's actually helpful in the health field because those people even though I fucked them up they actually went and got health so like the net benefit was me you know like I did that like sure I'm sure, like, you know, I'm not saying it's a one-to-one, -one, but it's, it's like in that same branch, you know what I'm saying? Like, inadvertently, I'm sure Jordan has helped a lot of people. Great, beautiful, awesome. But, like, the way you're looking at it is such a very, very, very weird way of looking at it. It's like somebody donating $10 to a church and going, I cured world hunger. Like, <laughs> in a way, sure, you might have, like, helped it a little bit, sure, but, like, dude, nobody's looking at it like that. And I guess you could look at it like that, but it's such a weird metric and nobody ever is going to judge it like that. But you can, you can 100%. You're so unique. Is people being healthy 
then you should be thanking me, honestly. Based on the way y'all obsess over my content, it seems unlikely that this would have been the only video. Try a calorie deficit for a month and see the see if the swelling goes down. If it does, which it will, because it's all fat tissue, then it's not lipedema. Okay, so I okay. This comment is in the right in the right spirit, but overall, if she does have lipedema, I believe from the research that I've done, which is just like I don't know, researching this on Wikipedia for an hour and a half. Um, pretty sure she can't do anything about it. I mean, there are procedures and things and such and so forth that she could do to, uh, to like mitigate some of that stuff. But overall, there's really not much she could do. Um, but a calorie deficit probably would help her. I mean, not for the not for the lipedema, but for the excess fat, the excess weight that she's holding on her body. That's what I would recommend. So like I said, if she did try for a month, I feel like she would definitely see some um, weight go down. Of mine that you've seen talking about lipedema. It seems unlikely that this would have been the only video of mine that you've seen talking about lipedema. But even if you hadn't seen my other videos, that was me at the doctor's office. And I go to the doctor quite frequently. And that doctor who's actually met me and examined my body and touched my skin okay. and run tests, he is who I trust with my medical care. Sure. Has your doctor ever talked to you about weight loss though? Is that not something you like, or you, I obviously Jordan is one of those people that says to the doctor that she doesn't want to talk about the weight and that, and, you know, all this other stuff like that. It is cool to trust your doctor, especially if you got a good doctor, it might be a little bit difficult to discern whether or not this person is the ultimate person for you. It's like therapy. Like you don't know if this person is trying to sabotage you or your relationships. Cause I know I've been in scenarios before where a therapist was trying to sabotage relationships. I, I don't know if like, this, this particular therapist was like actively trying to say like, oh, this your fucking boyfriend is garbage. You should never fucking talk to this person. And um, some therapists are really trash human beings because you got to ultimately understand that these people are human beings, right? So they're going to have some flaws or whatever the fuck. I just want to know, has your doctor never told you to lose weight? Has that never been a thing that he told you to do? I'm happy that you're getting treatment for your lipedema and your lymphedema or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it is personally, like in terms of like the tomatoes, tomatoes of it. But... They never talked to you about the actual weight loss. Is that not ever something you dis you discuss or you never thought about like maybe digesting that a little bit in your head? Never. And not faceless troll accounts like accept fatness, not morbid insanity. Am I insane or Damn, are that is a crazy ass name? Accept fatness, not morbid insanity. <laughs> you insane for thinking that you know more about my health than a medical professional, than a literal surgeon. Because it sounds pretty insane to me for you to think that based on one video or one image of me, you think that you know what's going on with my body. I think it's interesting how people will go to this like very, very be all end all point of view of like, because you don't know me completely, therefore you can't know me at all. Dude, there's a lot of things you can infer about somebody based off of just taking a glance upon them. Okay. And now granted, uh, you do have lipedema. I keep having the preferences, but is it really a far-fetched idea to believe that weight loss would not be something that would help you out immeasurably, Jordan? Not at all. Not at all. You never thought about that in the slightest. Like it's never occurred to you that maybe if you chose to lose some weight, it would help you. You think, you know, what is swelling? What is fluid? I know what's swelling right now. You already know what's talking about. Dude. What is lipedema and what is fat tissue? You think you know how much I eat and how much I exercise. You think that you can determine whether or not I am in a calorie deficit when I have never posted what I eat in a day. Sometimes it's like these people will say this shit, but if you're overweight, again, I have to keep referencing this. Yes, I understand this is a very nuanced subject when we come to Jordan, but objectively speaking, if somebody is overweight, I know the fucking not in the calorie deficit, especially if they maintain that weight for a long period of time. Now, granted, some people could be in a deficit in the sense of like they're fat, but they're losing weight. So they're still fat, but I'm not seeing that. Sure, that could happen. And I might be wrong in those scenarios, but I know that you didn't get that way from eating in a calorie deficit. That doesn't make any sense. The same thing could be said with working out. Like you could be a very active person, but overall, if you're overweight, what the fuck is it doing for you? So yes jordan you are correct that i don't know these like very key characteristics about you i didn't read your fucking wikipedia that's like 
apparently it's going to have to be updated on a 24-7 basis to like incorporate all the foods and all the decisions you make dietarily speaking and actively speaking in order to get a, an accurate assumption of who you are or what you are and how you do things. Nobody's thinking like that. Nobody talks like that. No, doctors don't even do that shit personally. Um, I know this, right? Doctors don't give a fuck about that on the, like even on the uh, like macro level. They're not going to care about that shit. So it's just a dumb, it's just a dumb statement. Or how much I exercise every day what my movement practice looks like, what my daily treatment for lipedema, which I have been diagnosed with by several doctors. Beautiful eyes. Looks like. Terrible no. hat, dude. Something from like Alice in the Wonderland or something like Schoolboy Q fusioned with Alice in the Wonderland. It's not lipedema. Totally. No, I think it's lipedema. I'll give her that. It's probably, it, it, obviously, if she's got diagnosed with it, I can't deny it. Talk about how fucking fat friendly this is. My truth is that I am not a haul video girl. I'm sorry, dude. Whenever somebody says, like, my truth when we start the shit up, dude, I'm just like, I'm I'm toned out, bro. I can't, that's just so cringy. I've been there. I've tried it. I've put my voice up the octave. It feels so disingenuous. However, this baby right here, this honker okay. of a package is my order from the big i've seen bigger packages oh you already know that i got a bigger package blood press sample sale so what am i gonna do not show you what's in here be for real Pop as you open. can see i couldn't even wait for my hair to dry so let's see what's in here i like don't even want to look low-key like i want to like pull them out one at a time pull them out Ooh, this feels the thickest this is probably the jumpsuit jumpsuit <laughs> Sometimes I think about what it would be like if I was a woman, dude, you know? Like, thinking about how great it would be if I was just shopping for nine hours on Shein and maybe, like, buying a, a ton of stuff and then trying it on 15 times and trying out the different outfits. And I'm not saying that guys can't do that, but I know a lot of guys, and this is obviously anecdotal, I know some dudes, including myself, that have been wearing the same clothes for 10-plus years. I don't know what it is. I've never walked into a woman's house before and she didn't have a closet that was like bigger than my entire apartment in terms of like the amount of furnished uh, clothing items she has in there. It's craziness, dude. And you go on that girl's phone and you check the Amazon cart filled up, filled up. You check the Shein cart filled up, dude. It's just I, all these clothes, all these accessories, all this jewelry. And I'm just looking at myself and I'm like, dude, I don't even know if I have deodorant at home. Like, I don't even know if I, like, washed my skin in the last two weeks. And it's just, oh, man, I really wonder what kind of girl I would be. I feel like I would smell like musk. I feel like I would most definitely, I'd be, like, the type of girl that had sex with you. And I'd forget that the condom was still in my vagina. I feel like I'd be that kind of girl. But I would be hot. I would be, I would have big butt cheeks, 100%. And I would have big boobs. And they would be all organic, too, 100%. I am losing my goddamn mind. Oh, you got like some kind of lumberjack jacket, dude? Okay. Rolls. <gasps> I'm it's not looking shirt, in the bag. Hyperventilating over a fucking shirt. Once again, until I pull it out. Oh, shit. These are the pants? The trousers. I also ordered them in a petite because I'm short as hell. I also got a green here. How are you going to order like an XXXL petite? Like, what is that combination? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Ooh. Damn, big as fuck. Damn, that shit big as fuck, dude. I'll tell you right now, these pants. Big. This spring are about to go crazy. What is it, dude? You just got some like green camo pants, dude? On me. I'm kind of obsessed that I got both pieces in green because I was kind of hoping for something in green. So, final piece. It's just green. That's the shipping label. I got, oh, a black bag. Okay, I'm actually very happy about this. It's just a bag. It's just a basic bag that I would take food shopping to my, how much you pay for that? How much you pay for that, dude? Okay, how long the straps are? I didn't know how long the straps were when I bought this. Can't you can't you buy bags with like adjustable straps? I'm sorry, dude, I'm, I'm ripping in. It's a bag. Be prepared to be sick of me. You know, it's all relative. You know, what you get hyped for is not what I'm getting hyped for. You know, for me personally, I get hyped for 20-year-old games that come out for the new shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like the new Star Wars Battlefront 2. Not remastered, but just AI upscaled. I'm super hyped about that shit because that's a game I played when I was a kid. And I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have so much fucking fun, dude. I'm going to play through the whole thing. And even though I played it like 
probably 80 times already. I just get hyped for it, you know? It's all relative. You could look at me and you go, David, that's fucking, that's, what are you fucking, what is wrong with you? Paying more money for $30 for a game that came out $20, 20 and you have the original game? I know. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me, dude. But I am... It's just a problem. It's a problem for me. And it's all relative. So I'm not going to shit on her for her preferences. But it is a bag. It's a fucking bag. I don't know. It's not even a cool bag. It's not like an MK that has like a Michael Kors written across the side. And you go outside and people are going to look at that like, oh my god, she's a mean girl. Whoa. That girl? Mm-hmm. She only wears pink on Wednesdays. And this bag. If you need me, I'm about to go lose my marbles off camera. You can have, and probably one of the most intimidating ones, is being in shape. Pretty, dude. She's pretty. I would say... Very weird shirt, though. There's, like, stretch is so open, man. On the, uh... So, no hate to this creator at all. I think that she is exemplifying the problem of skinny, pretty privilege. Her point in this video... I can't say, like, yo, guess what? I don't, I don't hate this girl at all, but... Nah, this fucking bitch. She's doing some crazy... I don't fuck with that shit. Yeah, exemplifying thin privilege. I think that she is exemplifying the problem of skinny, pretty privilege. Her point in this video is that basically, if you're in shape, you, you get- know, I feel like these people get upset because like, here's the thing. If somebody is skinny and pretty, there's not much they can do to not exemplify the pretty skinny privilege that they have. Like, what do you want them to do? You want them to like walk outside and dress up like, I don't even fucking like, ah, uh, like Amish people or something like that. Even if I swear, dude, I know a girl who's probably a 10 and she's a super attractive, just all always good looking girl, right? She is a teacher and the amount of times that the uh, the principals or the, uh, the other students and things like that will call her up like, damn, you got yacht or whatever the fuck. Um, and the principals will be like, hey, um, your clothing choices today are a little bit crazy and she'll just be wearing something basic, like something that me or you could wear that would exemplify my body and your body in a very appropriate way she would wear and it would just be like very concerning because of the way her body is formatted and the way that um how how beautiful and how elegant that she 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 just is in the world there's not much you can do there's really not much you can do and when i see people saying this stuff and i think i understand in the sense of like you think it's unfair that these people are like exercising their prettiness or whatever the fuck and i always look at it like this if you have a crutch you should use it so like if for instance you got into school off a scholarship for being black, which I know is no longer in place, right? Affirmative action. I wouldn't be upset with you if you had some stuff like that. You, you're taking what you got. You don't want to pay for school. Nobody wants to fucking pay for school. Nobody wants to be in debt. Obviously not. If you have to take a crutch, take the fucking crutch. 100%. Right, if it's in place, that's there for a fucking reason. In the same way that if I had a, if I knew a pretty girl that was selling her feet pictures and selling vagina, and obviously there are people out here that are less fortunate and have to work like you know jobs that require them to do physical labor, and they're getting paid less money compared to that person. I understand it. It's very unfair in the sense of like you weren't dealt the same set of hands that this person was. But it's important to understand that what you're going through is different from what that person is going through. And you're actually looking at it in the sense of like this person is getting all these privileges when in reality they're, they, 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 they are in this, this particular sense. But it's too easy to look at it like that and not look at the other end. Like the amount of times I've talked to these girls because it's mostly girls. I mean I've talked to guys that are like super attractive too but it's a little bit less um, – it's a little bit less obvious for guys because guys are sometimes judged based off of other things as well. Whereas women, it's very difficult sometimes to even actually even know if you're being judged for anything other than just your physical appearances, right? Talk to these women and they go, I don't know if I was actually put in this position because I'm good at my job or if I'm just pretty or I don't know, I look good or like guys will just open doors for me and guys will just let me go in line or, you know, they have all these things happen to them and you might look at that and go, these are privileges, right? But it might not be a privilege. Like if you're in a circumstance where you don't know if this guy actually wants to be with you for you or he just wants to be with you because you're like one of the hottest people he's ever met and he wants to have sex with you. And I'm sure that all women can relate to that to a certain degree, but it's like probably very, very hyper emphasized to have that happen to you if you're a very pretty woman. Kind of like for me, once you find out that I got a big dick, obviously you're gonna be like all over me because my penis is so massive. It's like unbelievable, obviously. And you're gonna like only want me for my penis, right? It's like in the same thing like that. It's like, if you don't know if you're actually being valued off of who you are, rather than the things that you had no control over in general, right? And I feel like when people talk about it like this, they're not, it's tough. In the sense of like, I get it, you would like to be in that scenario. And to a certain degree, you can actually achieve a lot of that. She's not ugly. She's not ugly at all, actually. And she could probably afford to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds off the top. But it's it just comes off a little bit unnuanced, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like these people got to think about it a little bit more.
get treated better and that it's a silent flex to be in shape and so she's it is it is 100 percent a silent flex because mo like when you see somebody that's in shape it's obvious in the most unobvious way it shows that you know what you're doing and it's not like a a, a, a somebody with a blow horn going i'm in shape i'm beautiful i can lift myself off the floor if i fall down like it's not like that it's just you're looking at that person and you're going this person is doing something right when you see somebody that's fat or overweight not the same thing says that as somebody who has been in shape for most of her life the only people that are generally confident enough to ask her out in person are people who are also in shape and she i think that it depends on who you, I, I think it depends on the situation i think that in the scenario of guys right the amount of times i've heard guys go i'm short uh women don't want to date short guys i'm five foot six i don't know what am i gonna do and i always think there's being five foot six and then there's acting like you're five foot six if you act small if you're like a very concealed person and you don't have like this like you know over the top personality you don't take up space in the room obviously this girl's gonna think you're short but i mean objectively physically speaking you're short but you know what i'm saying like there's a way that somebody can overcome these things if they know how to overcome this stuff right i know plenty of guys that get tons and tons and tons of women that have tons of women that want to be with them and things such and so forth shorter guys shorter guys five foot six and and they get they get tons of play they get tons of women that want to be with them very high value men and it's not so much the height that's negatively affecting you. It's so it's more so like you, like you're holding yourself back. And I know it's easier said than done. Obviously, this is like it depends on the situation and scenario. But oftentimes when I hear guys say things like that where they go, I'm short, women don't ever want to be with me. I always think that's bullshit. Like, you know, that's not true. You know, you could do other things that could enhance you in different directions. You could become more like bosprius. You can go to the gym. You could work out. You can get that, get out of that gut. You can become more confident. There are plenty of things that you can do. So when I hear like, only only really fit guys hit me up i think that's probably bullshit because most of the time um if you're a very confident person if you know your worth just because somebody looks i've dated women that are like obviously far and away way better looking than me like i'm not anything right i'm like five at most for the most most of my time i'd probably be a six on i don't know a good day right um but i've dated women that are like if i'm gonna be honest here a 10 I've, I've dated women that are like tens and that is not a flex I don't value looks like that because I know there's more to somebody than just looks. If somebody that's a 10 could easily be a fucking 2 when it comes to personality. And a lot of people are quick to judge these people based off of how they look and they don't look deeper than that. They just kind of assume that you got lucky because you're dating a 10. When in reality, that person's a bitch and she's terrible to be around, right? So it's super easy for people to do that. But I know even though I look lesser than her, she values other things that I have that are more valuable than the fact that I'm a 5 or a 6. And I think it's... It's, it's very, very um, advantageous for a lot of guys, especially, to maximize, to mid-max as much as you can the things that you can, you can control. Because, like, I can't do anything about the bone structure. I can't do anything about the way that my body is shaped in the, uh, the organic sense. Obviously, you can go to the gym and shit like that. But I know I can do other stuff. I know I can become more funny. I know I can become better in conversation. I know I can be, make more money. I know that I can... You know what I'm talking about? There's tons of stuff that men can do. And women, of course. Obviously, this affects everybody. But there are a lot of things that people can do and when i hear people go like only these particular people um talk to me i mean i'm sure that though you have probably a lot of people like that are, are approaching you but that doesn't always necessarily mean that those people are the best for you and also um if a person is like super confident within themselves and things like that and they know what they're bringing to the table i think that yeah you could probably get help with a guy that's like really short or a guy that's really fat or a guy whatever if he knows he's confident he knows what he brings to the table yeah of course it says that like being in shape is a sign of consistency in your diet and in exercise yep, i just think it's really interesting this concept of like being in shape because i am an athlete i would consider myself to be in shape i, I agree in the sense of like sometimes in shape is a very subjective term because if you look at like Brian Shaw, who's like the world's strongest man, this guy's like 450 pounds. He's in shape for what he needs to do. He needs to be 450 pounds in order to lift these heavy ass weights off the floor and to do his job. So he's in shape. I mean, granted, he's dying because that's not healthy, but still. Not in the way that she seems to be implying. Yeah, we're talking about like an objective we're talking about an objective, general sense term of in shape. Not many people think I'm in shape and think of Brian Shaw. Not many people think of I'm in shape because I'm a professional eater and I weigh 450 pounds of fat. Not many people are thinking like that. So we're thinking about it in the sense of like the general perspective of what is in shape. Usually that means somebody that goes to the gym, somebody that's of the weight they're supposed to be in. Maybe they're a little bit muscular, not too muscular, but somebody that is consistent and going to the gym and eating right. That's usually what people are thinking about. 
for example, having a six pack. Having visible abs. I don't think that's what most people think. Abs primarily depends on your body fat percentage. Yeah. I, again, I don't think most, most people when you ask them, um, like, what do you think of in shape? I'm sure some people will think abs, but she's right. It is based off the body fat, body fat percentages. A lot of people think that if they just do crunches for hours and hours and hours a day, that somehow that's going to increase their ab percentages. If you're fat and you've got a layer of fat above your abs, that's not going to do shit. The fact that you're growing your ab muscles, you still have that layer of fat on your shit. You got to lose the belly fat, which is just, I mean, there's no targeted way of losing fat. You just kind of lose it. So, and that's why Usually when you see guys or girls in the summertime that have abs, they only really maintain those particular things unless they have really good genetics or they're taking drugs for two or three months because they know that it's not a sustainable practice. They want to eat. They want to actually eat, but they know they can look good for two or three months. And it's a struggle for them to keep up with that, but it's worth it for them because they can take those selfies or delicious selfies of their abs and things like that. But most people are not thinking about um, people that are in shape thinking about abs. They're just thinking about somebody that has a routine going to the gym and eating right. Which genetics is a huge deciding factor. Sure. I guess the question is, why is being in shape or being skinny silent flex? I because it's a reflection of responsibility. It's a reflection of taking care of yourself. It's a reflection. It's showing you all these great, amazing traits that somebody is obviously going to find attractive. Is being more desirable because you're skinny a flex. Okay, another example. You just answered your own question. Like, why is being desirable? What? Okay. A flex. Why is being more desirable? Because you're skinny. A flex. It's like it answers its own question. Okay, another example of thin privilege that I've noticed since losing 95 pounds is job, the, the amount of free stuff or discounts that I've been offered. Drinks that. I love it when people like flex all the good shit they get now. Like, oh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, guys keep buying me drinks. I don't know. Like, I keep having doors held for me. I'm, I'm just getting free stuff all the time. And then somebody's just sitting there going, but I never have that happen to me. Bar, free. Appetizers or dessert at a restaurant, free. Cool. Discounts on clothes. I went to the register and I was buying a bodysuit and I thought it was like 20% off. You know, I've had stuff like that happen to me. Like the other, like, I think like last year I was outside of a McDonald's and I was waiting for somebody to come out. And there was a, it was like a, a crackhead, right? She walked by me and she asked me if I had a cigarette or something like that. And I told her no. And then she said that I look sexy and then she walked by. And then I was like, oh, see, like, I know I can relate. Are you getting free appetizers? You getting free drinks? I'm getting compliments about crackheads telling me that I'm hot. So what you want to do now? Like we, we're equal. But it rang up as not 20% off. So I asked and she was like, oh, this one's not, but I'll give it to you. When I say that never any of these things ever happened to me when I was in a bigger body. So you're telling me as you got more attractive, more people were more attracted to you and they decided, and this is just like, even though I think a lot of people might consider that when you become attractive as a woman, you'll get men that are like super, super trying to like do appease you and things like that. I think that's obviously true, but it's also true on the opposite end, which is like women are also going to do that because women want to be around other women that are attractive. Like that's just what it is. People in general like to be around people that are attractive. So Sure, guys find it really, really cool that you have a vagina and you're attractive. So it's like, oh, yes, double up. But women are also, they like that. They like that you're you're attractive. So I could definitely see that, dude. I mean, I wouldn't have given you a fucking discount. I'm not getting fucking fired. What are you talking about? So you can say that it's a coincidence. You can say that. I don't think it's a coincidence. You probably lost weight and now you're suffering upwardly of all the good stuff that's happening to you. Good job. You did. You did. You did good. You're 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 being rewarded for it. It's the way I carry myself. You can say it's because I have more confidence now but I just really don't think it is. Yeah. The difference is just that I lost 95 pounds. I am in an average size body now. Yeah. I am you. not living in a bigger body anymore. And I always Slay. knew that this existed. I always knew that this was a thing. The passive ability, you know, like when you lose weight, your passive attractiveness goes up. Or like if you're playing Fallout or something, it would be the luck stat. Your luck stat went up. But it really took me living it to understand how- You know what's crazy is like these people will sit there, like I watch these videos, right? Almost daily and I hear these people talking about the benefits of losing weight and having like people appease them and talk to them more and get more stuff and people are just more friendly to them and things like that. And I hear this and they go, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And then I hear these fat people complaining consistently about all the problems they face in life. And I go, do you guys like not watch these videos of these people like losing weight and having all this stuff given to them? And then you guys are over here constantly complaining about all the problems. Why don't you just like look at that and go, hold on, wait a minute now. You're telling me if I lose weight and I get here, I can get that stuff too? Yes. Yes, probably. I mean, not all of it, but probably depending on how, how attractive you are. Yeah. Then it happens. 
And I notice things like this on at least a weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis. It's so wild. It's crazy that this person is looking at it as like thin privilege though. Sure, it's thin privilege, but it's also like the most, it's thin privilege in the basic aspect of this is just what people are treated like in general. Target, do you actually carry plus sizes? Do you just profit off of plus size people's images? You can hire plus size models to model Damn. your clothes and look like you carry diverse sizes. Get the yeah, that is the most, bro, hold up, bro. Look at this shit. White girl, crazy jawline, Willem Dafoe jawline. Models. Black girl, right? Black girl, terrible outfit, by the way. Moo moo, whatever this is. And, look and then Asian woman wearing tiger print. <laughs> wow. What is that fucking brag? It's like any movie made past 2020. You know what I'm talking about? Like it has to have like a super diverse cast of people, right? Asian guy, black woman, fucking white guy, but he's gay, right? That's what it's like nowadays. And this is what Target's doing. I mean, you got to appease everybody, I guess, dude. And hey, if you want more inclusion, that's fine too. But I hate when it's like forced in your fucking mouth. I hate that shit. Look like you carry diverse sizes. Get the biggest size I can find is an XXL. That's big as fuck. Is that not big as fuck? I know that's like straight sizes or whatever, dude. But that's big as fuck. Plus size section looks like this. Three racks. Go to the men's section real quick. Go, go to the men's section real quick. Look at the two racks they got. Yeah, two racks. Half the clothes don't fit. The other, like, two, 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 ra yeah, two racks. Half the, the one rack has nothing, right? And the other rack, there's like a kid sleeping in the middle of it. And there's like 10 guys around looking at the same shirt being depressed because they don't want to buy it because it doesn't fit them anyway. Oh, sorry, actually. Two racks. This is clearance. Mm -hmm. so if you're going to walk the walk and have plus size models, that's great. But I think we got to calm down on walking the walk. I think that's a poor choice of words, especially when it comes to people of plus size calibers, especially if you, you're going into Target and you can't find plus size clothes in the plus size section. Two racks. This is clearance. So if you're going to walk the walk and have plus size models, that's great. But can you actually have plus size clothes? It's been a no. year since I started Chub Rep and became a solopreneur, and I've learned a lot. A of what? Plus size clothes. It's been a year since I started Chub Rep and became a solo. A solopreneur? Man, people just make words up nowadays, dude. Fat babes are hot. If you, where are you even putting something like this? Are you putting this on your, like, your bumper? It's like a bumper sticker on your car? This is cringe, dude. Can you imagine if I wrote this anywhere? If I was like, yeah, guys with mustaches are hot. Why do I need something like this in order to like, I don't know, amplify my deliciousness? Why do you need this? Entrepreneur, and I've learned a lot of important lessons along the way. Number one, set your priorities first. True. When I started Damn. Chub Rub, I decided to create a brand where fat liberation came first. From that viewpoint, it's easy for me to make decisions that align with our mission. Sometimes these choices mean making statements. This can't be sustainable, right? Like what, what percent, this has to be like a fucking very, very niche category. Cause I feel like half your, half your buying base probably dies year to year, right? Like you're probably significantly losing customers year to year. And then also, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Or working on projects that may ultimately limit. That woman got an eye patch, dude. These choices mean making statements or working on projects that may. Oh, no, never mind. It's like a paw print or something like that, dude. Damn, look at his haircut, dude. Why she got a haircut like that? That's a weird haircut. The sides. What is this, 2016? You remember when everybody in 2016 did that? I remember everybody had the side shaved and then girls would just kind of slide this over on one side. They thought they were so cool. I never fucked with it. I never fucked with it, dude. I don't care about that shit. Or when girls were just clean shaving their heads because they thought it was cool and then it died out real fucking quick. Or when girls were like, I don't even know, like dyeing their vagina hair green or painting with their menstrual blood because they thought they were empowering women. What the fuck happened in 2016, dude? It was like a fever dream thinking about it. Like that whole year was just crazy and gross. Ultimately limit our potential profit. Why is it all men? I mean, my bad. Why is it all women? Why don't you have like a single guy here that show the representation? You guys are always talking about like black, brown, whatever the fuck. Where the men at? Where the big busky men at? But over time, they've allowed us to find our perfect audience, you, and get in front of the community that we aim to serve. True. So how can this help you? Ask yourself this simple question the next time you're thinking about taking on a new project. Does this align with my beliefs? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, sure. That's like, I mean, you know what? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic create creators and um, beautiful people and great ceiling fans. That's all you need in life. Okay. Anyway, I'm wearing an undershirt, by the way. I know it looks like I'm not wearing an undershirt, but I'm wearing an undershirt. You would never not catch me wearing an undershirt. It's just, I've had this shirt now for like, I don't know. I've had this shirt for a long time. It's got a hole in it. You guys want to see the hole here? Look at the hole. Look at the hole. Look how big it is. 
Look, see? But I don't want to throw it away. Because I don't really have a lot of clothes. I don't really... It's not because I don't... I have money, sure. But, like, I don't like buying clothes. I don't like buying things for myself in general. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You know what does matter, though? You. You matter significantly. And thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all of those things. I'd appreciate tremendously. It helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I'd appreciate it. I'm almost 10,000 subscribers. So if you can help me get to that milestone, I'd appreciate it. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in hair, H-A-I-R, hair, not like the, the bunny rabbit or whatever they call those things, like the cooler version of calling something a bunny rabbit. You have outrageously good hair, amazing hair. Um, it's so thick. It's so coarse. It's so absolutely moisturized because I know you've been cleansing your body and you've been nutritionizing your hair. And also through the process of doing those things, you've also been liquidizing the internal capacities of your body through the process of H2O. And I think that should be celebrated day to day out. I mean, that's just what it is, obviously. I mean, so many people are chronically dehydrated in our country and uh, around the world in general. We're not drinking enough water. Can you imagine being in a place where you can't get water and you're just still dehydrated? That's tough. But I know you are incentivizing drinking water as much as you can. And you're reducing the amount of coffees that are super, super not good for you. You're eating healthier. You're doing good stuff for yourself. Your eyebrows are becoming more liquidated by the day. And your lashes are looking slay queen edges. That's a factual statement. Anyway. If you want to check out my social medias and or my second channel, you can go ahead and do that looking in the description of this video and also the description of my channel. If you just click the about section on that, you could find all that goodness. It's my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord server, and my second channel where I upload stream highlights because we stream every once in a while on this channel. You can catch me around like 6 o'clock EST. If you ever see that, then you can join in and we can talk about stuff. Anyway, guys, not every night. Sometimes I'm doing something else. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.